Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Demonic Inquisition in the Tomb of Sargeras. Yes, this encounter consists of fighting two bosses with a shared health pool, and throughout the fight, players will be gaining torment energy, which they need to remove at certain times by entering a cage on the back of one of the bosses. Now, just as a quick note, you may notice that the footage is a little bit choppy. Unfortunately, this boss absolutely destroys frame rates at the moment for some reason. Yeah. So this is kind of the best that we have. Hopefully, it isn't too painful. Now, understanding Torment and how to deal with it is the number one thing that you need to know. So let's kick straight into it. Now, Torment is an alternate energy that is shown on a bar on your screen. You gain Torment through the boss's spells, most of which are unavoidable. When you reach 100 Torment, you'll gain a debuff called Unbearable Torment, which will make you pretty useless by reducing your output to nearly zero, whilst also increasing the damage you take by a ton. To remove your Torment, you need to press the Confess Extra Action button. This will teleport you inside a new cage room. Here you will fight a Tormented Soul Ad, which melee hits the target with the highest threat, and also spawns a bunch of green swirly circles every now and then which you need to avoid. You'll also be taking ever increasing ticking damage whilst inside the cage, so you do not want to spend too long down there. Now as you damage the ad, orbs will be flying out of it. Running over an orb will absorb it, and it will remove around 35 of your torment. Once you've picked up enough orbs, and you've removed all of your torment, you can reuse the extra action button to leave the cage and return to the normal encounter room. So the best way of getting the raid to drop torment is by having one high torment tank and one high torment healer enter the cage. Shortly afterwards, a few high torment DPS should also go inside the cage and start generating and collecting orbs. Those DPS should then leave as soon as they possibly can so that other DPS can enter the cage. The reason that you stagger them is that you want to avoid having a large selection of your raid inside the cage at any one time, as you do need players in the main room to deal with the boss's abilities. So High Torment DPS should just keep cycling in and out of the cage until the tank and the healer need to leave. This will be when the outside tank needs to enter the cage to drop his torment, or when the stacking dot inside has gotten too high, around 8 stacks, on those caged players. At that point, everybody needs to leave the cage, and then the new High Torment tank and a different High Torment healer can go inside, and then you just kind of repeat this until the bosses die. So by having the tank and at least one healer inside the cage, you're basically creating a window for other players to enter the cage whenever they need to go in there, rather than doing it at set points. And then simply, the inside tank and healer just need to be vocal with the rest of the raid to let them know exactly when they're going to be leaving. So that way players can decide if they have enough time to go in the cage and quickly drop their torment, or not even bother and wait until the next tank and healer go inside. And that's how you deal with the torment. But let's look at how you actually get it in the first place. Now for your tanks, Atragan will constantly be applying a large amount of torment to you through his Bone Scythe passive, which causes each of his melee attacks to place two torment on you. On top of this, he'll be casting Scythe Sweep, which is a frontal cleave that deals a large burst of damage and applies 20 torment. Now, unfortunately, you cannot sidestep this ability. It's just vital that you make sure that you're facing away from the raid, otherwise the entire raid's gonna get hit by it instead. These two abilities combined make it so the tanks get so much more torment than anyone else in the raid. And as a result, they're going to need to confess more often. Just make sure that both your tanks are communicating with one another because they both can't go in the same time, otherwise Atrigan's just gonna go running around and hit people in the face. On top of this, he will also cast Calcified Quills. What he'll do is face towards a random player in the raid and then send a shockwave of spikes out towards them, knocking up and dealing damage to anyone in its path. Ideally, the marked player needs to move to the side of the room and get the shockwave to fly into an area that just has no players in it. However, this probably won't happen and it will just fly across the room most of the time, knocking up half your raid. Now, the knockup effect as well as the damage isn't really too problematic as it doesn't actually generate any torment. So at the end of the day, if it is placed incorrectly, it's not a massive deal. Just do your best to get out of the way of it. And Atragan's most important ability to deal with is Bone Saw. Every 60 seconds or so, he'll just spin around dealing high damage and applying 4 torment to all nearby players every 2 seconds for 16 seconds. During this time, he'll also do a small amount of ticking damage to the raid. To add, if any players damage him during his bone saw cast, they'll generate a large amount of torment. So as soon as he starts the cast, all DPS should immediately swap to Belak. Note that dots and debuffs applied before the bone saw starts won't generate any additional torment. However, if you reapply the dots and debuffs during the cast, you will. Also note that cleave effects such as barrage will also give you the extra torment. So it's vital that when this bone saw is cast, Atragan is nowhere near Belak. During this cast, Atragan's movement speed is reduced by 75%, so it's very easy for the tank just to kite the boss away from Belak while taking no damage himself. 
Now, as for Belak, he doesn't need to be tanked. He can't even be moved, in fact. And instead, he'll just be casting his Pangs of Guilt. This cast just deals a large amount of damage to the raid. However, it is interruptible. You need to have a rotation of three short cooldown interrupts to keep this ability locked down 100% of the time. However, as players will need to confess at some point or another, you'll need to have backups assigned for each player so that no matter where they are, the boss is always interrupted. Now, ranged players will want to be spread out the majority of the time, mainly for Belek's Suffocating Dark ability. When this is cast, it will place Void Zones on the location of three random ranged players. These Void Zones deal a bit of ticking damage and slow you by 50% whilst inside it, but more importantly, anyone inside will receive 10 Torment every second. So you need to have these spread out and make sure that you do not stand inside them. General good places for them to spawn are around the outsides of the room. However, you must not place them near the entrance of the room, as players leaving the confession cage will frequently spawn there as they re-enter the room. Being spread it also helps deal with the echoing anguish debuffs. These are applied to multiple players at once, and they just deal ticking damage and apply two torment every one second for 12 seconds. When it times out or it is dispelled, the debuff explodes, dealing a large amount of damage and applying 10 torment to anyone within 8 yards. When you get this debuff, you want to make sure you move away from anyone else and then get dispelled. In large raid sizes, we found that just calling out when you're ready to be dispelled worked well, as healers can struggle to see where you are when 29 other players are running around the room. Now, if you're fortunate enough to never get hit by either the Echoing Anguish debuff or the Suffocating Dark Purple Circles underneath you, you're still going to receive unavoidable torment via Tormenting Burst. This cast just deals a flat amount of damage to the raid and applies 4 torment to everybody. There's nothing you can really do about this ability. One thing we will say is that this is probably a good time to use a healing cooldown, especially if Bonesaw is going off at the exact same time. And similarly to Atragan's Bonesaw, Belak will cast Fell Squall. This deals damage to all players within 8 yards of him, applies torment to them, while also dealing a small amount of damage to the raid over 16 seconds. And again, during this time, if you do attack Belak, you'll also get additional torment. So it's at this point the DPS will then want to swap to Atragan. And once again, tanks, make sure Atragan is nowhere near Belak because you do not want any cleave going onto Belak, otherwise people are just going to be forced to go and drop their torment. As soon as the fell school ends, you need to make sure that your interrupt rotation is ready to pick it up immediately, as the boss will start casting Pang's Guilt again. Now there are two different ways of positioning with these bosses, you can just have them spread out the entire time, that way it's really hard to mess up the bone saw or the fell school, but there is downtime in between those two abilities, so what you can do instead is you can bring both of those bosses together, and before they start casting their signature spells, you can then just spread them back out. It's entirely up to you which one you want to do, it's just if you do decide to stack them together, you're going to get far more DPS out. But aside from that, that's all there is to this encounter. So thank you very much for watching guys if this guide did help you out then make sure you leave a like on it it helps us out a lot and if you do want to go and check out this fight in its written form or any of the other bosses in the tomb of sargeras do check out our written guides over on wowhead the link for that is in the description below also a big shout out to our supporters over on patreon who allow us to do these guides it really does mean a lot so thank you so so much and thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time thanks for watching